the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord our Gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the Gospel of St. John. And this is, in a way, uh, the initiation, the opening, the introduction to the great discourse of Jesus Christ on the bread of life. For this Sunday, we see the account of the multiplication of loaves and uh, the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 people that followed Jesus. We have been reflecting on the theme of taking the initiative in helping other people. But the initiative should be rooted in God's Word, God's inspiration, and God's action. In the first reading, we find the prophet Elisha receiving from a, pro a farmer 20 barley loaves and some pieces of corn. And uh, he instructs his servant to feed the people, which numbered maybe about uh, 300 people, 100 men. And the, the uh, servant already found how humanly impossible that was. But Elisha trusted in the Word of God and took the initiative in helping and feeding the people based on his faith in the Word of God. And the miracle happened. In the second reading, we find St. Paul urging the Ephesians and urging us to take the initiative in forming a community truly united. But what will we contribute to the community? Humility, meekness, patience. But all of these are not just human traits. They are rooted in the Spirit, in our common faith, in our baptism, this is God the Father, present in all, wanting us to bring to the community His love, His meekness, His humility, His patience. So, human action, human initiative is there. But the challenge is, what is the root of our human planning and human actions? Now, in the Gospel, we find Jesus being followed by a big crowd. And when he saw the crowds, he took the initiative. He asked Philip, where can we get uh, enough bread to feed this big crowd? Look, he did not ask uh, 
what Philip was planning to do. Implied in the question of Jesus was his plan. These people must be fed. So he was pushing Philip, let us find a way to feed these people. Taking the initiative. Okay. Now, from the mindset of Philip, and I guess many of us share this mindset, this initiative of Jesus is quite foolish. This initiative is careless. This initiative comes from an adventurous, a Don Quixote type of person, you know, who is uh, so uh, captured by a vision that a uh, reality check is no longer present. So Philip says, hey, do you realize that we need about 200 days wages to be able to feed them? No. So how? How will we, how will be, we be able to do no? what you are telling us to do? You are taking an initiative which is bound to fail. Now, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, presents to Jesus a young man, a lad, who had uh, five barley loaves, less than uh, the 20 loaves offered to Elisha, five and a couple of dried fish. Again, his human mindset made him say, oh, but what good is this? Yeah, If you are to feed 5,000, how can you do that with five loaves and a couple of dried fish? So Philip and Andrew were really testing also the initiative that Jesus is taking in this careless feeding of the 5,000. But you could see Jesus firm in his initiative. He does what a father in a regular home would do. Before a meal, the father of the house would take the bread, give thanks, blesses the father, God, the source of all of this. And after giving thanks, he breaks the bread to be shared by his family. In a ritual action, done in every home, Jewish home, by the Father. Jesus is communicating to Philip, Andrew, and the rest of the crowd, Hey, I stand before you as someone sent by the Father, by the true Father in heaven, who sees our needs, who gives us grain, who gives us bread, and His gift is here before us. If we only recognize that it comes from Him, and if we take the initiative, which is rooted in His action, His providential love, His paternal care for His children, if that is the root of our initiative, then we can feed 5,000 people and there will be a lot left over. For the love of God will always exceed our expectations and our needs. So, the initiative that Jesus is showing is not a reckless adventurism uh, on the part of someone who just wants to prove oneself. It is rooted in a deep relationship with the Father whose love He wants to show now. And He knows that the love of the Father knows no bounds. It will break all human expectations. And the miracle happened. Twelve baskets of leftovers were collected. They could stay on for another meal. Only God could have done this. Only a person like Jesus whose human planning, action, and initiatives are rooted in the graciousness of God. And you see, 
after all of this, the people wanted to make him king. They just missed the point. But Jesus withdrew. He did not want to have a share in this purely human political agenda. They just missed the point. He was taking the initiative, yes, but this is an initiative in order to mirror God's graciousness and God's love. My dear brothers and sisters, there is so much hunger in our country, so much hunger in the world. We need men and women who will be bold, who will be creative, who will take the initiative in responding to their neighbors' pleas and needs. However, let us check the source of our plans and our initiatives. If they are not rooted in the Word of God, if they are not rooted in the work of the Spirit, if they are not rooted in the sense of mission to communicate to the world the Father's gracious love, then maybe our initiatives will fail. So I'm not saying that we should not take any initiative, but those initiatives must come from the very initiative of God. Then miracles will happen. I'm sure all of you are familiar with the Pondo ng Pinoy, where one of our heroes is this young lad who brought his five barley loaves and two fishes. Now, Pondo ng Pinoy, a movement initiated by the church in order to instill in us the initiative of doing little acts of goodness for our needy brothers and sisters, symbolized by the 25 centavo coin. Take the initiative, but the root should be the Father's love for all. Everyone, rich and poor, could be an agent of God's mercy and compassion. Now, when I was still the Bishop of Emus, there was a feeding program that was uh, initiated by the parish priest and some uh, leaders of a particular parish with the help of Pondo ng Pinoy. Now, what an initiative. I guess it started with a simple uh, desire to be able to feed children below 12 years old who are underweight and undernourished, whose heart will not break when someone sees those children. But with the catechesis, wow, the initiative moved beyond simply a human response to a human need. The catechesis brought to the mother's uh, mind, heart, that the root of this is the love of the Father. And so when the feeding program in one barangay ended, the mothers of these children took the initiative. Let us go to the next barangay. Let us also feed their children. Let us train the mothers how to be good mothers. Let us train the fathers how to be responsible fathers. Now the initiative is there, more zealous, but rooted in their experience of God's love. Let this spread. Let initiative be there, but always rooted in the Word of God and the love of God. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.